question i would like to ask about armor rendering or the fur because that's also cool <laughs> i like that you guys like the production value and eh? hey eh? 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 all right um okay armor rendering for this boy let's make it bigger and fur i'll do both sure i'll do both um let me take a look first we'll do armor then we'll do fur okay i can tell that the rdc is like a bevel to it okay yeah all right good to go I don't need I don't think you need to do that every time though, but it's great. I will do that every time because it's great. Um also it'll help you when you'll be editing stuff. I know, five head. Anyways, alright, armor. So first thing you do is as you're rendering art, it won't. Gosh darn it. Should I not do it? I kinda wanna use it all the time. Okay. I'm still gonna use it. All right, let's answer this question. Uh, first thing you do is... Which armor do you want me to do? I'll do the bear, because there's the armor and then there's the fur. Let's do the bear. All right, so bear has has sort of a um, bronze type of armor. We're going to draw... I'm going to bring this here. Whoa, I'm going to bring this here. Killing his bird is worth, yeah. Alright, let's do this little shape here of the bear. It's pretty much like we did with the honey. But, um... You draw the armor first. I mean, this is mostly a rendering question, so I will be focusing on that. So, let's do this piece of armor on the... on the polar bear. Race car, yeah. <laughs> if only. Um... What's up, Vader? Oh, what? I already say hello. All right, never mind. Draw a bear in a race car. <laughs> so we're gonna get the shape ready first. Uh, I do recommend you guys to generally keep stuff separating layers, especially like if you want to get work, you need to have your your files organized. Uh, and trust me, that will help you a lot in terms of just production generally speaking although if you're doing it for yourself no one no one really cares um so here we go all right so we have this silhouette here we'll do we'll uh, render the armor first and then we'll do the fur just like i was saying before i like to start with my light of course you keep you you have to keep in mind material right it's is it a polished metal is it a rusty metal is it a blend of both what is the condition of the metal now on the bear it seems like it's pretty clean with a little bit of like i don't know scratchiness to it here and there there's a little bit of texture but it's pretty reflective so that tells us that it's um it's in good condition honestly uh, do I need to tag anyone when I ask Silver Deco's question? Uh, maybe Calyx, I guess. But you don't really have to. Just post a question. I like to start with my Light and Shadow, aka Gradients. Gradients will help you always a ton. Whoops. I'm making a new layer. And I'm painting within the shape here. So, my light... Okay, what kind of light do we have? We have a sunlight, it seems, here, right? Uh, I'm gonna paint the direction of the light, all right? And then one thing to know to to note in at least generally in light, the transition between light and shadow, the middle of it, you should always make it just a touch like saturated because it makes rendering not just metal but in general less dull so in this case i added my lights here and then this area right here right it's making it just a little bit dull so i i will want to increase maybe the saturation and the warmth of it just a little bit there hold on there you go it's a touch nothing too crazy nothing too fancy unless there's subsurface scattering which doesn't really happen in metal that much but um 
just a little bit of that and now a little bit of blue from the environment because you have a cold environment uh, let's make the blue so the blue is ambient light ambient light is never um as bright as direct light Wh whether it be sun or whatever unless unless the sunlight is being diffused by clouds or something else but generally speaking you always want to in your values you want to keep the the bounce light definitely darker than your direct sunlight right so i'm gonna do a little bit of that here in the corner uh there's none here honestly if i was rendering this myself i i think it needs a little bit of that there however I'm gonna be following the picture more than what I think is correct. Uh, I'm gonna add a little bit of um, like a dark salmon color, just again in between the light and shadow, and we'll be ready for patterns. And after patterns is going to be the details, right? And we're gonna make this whole thing uh, look the way it is in the picture. Um, by the way, uh, the images that you're sending me will figure out who the artist is and add them to the description of the videos. So if I don't mention it here, I apologize in advance. Uh, we will be searching for, for the artist's names. In fact, Chad, if you post a question, uh, make sure that you like tell us who the artist is because I, I want to make sure I give them the proper you know shout outs and stuff okay so uh now that i did my light that i have my midtones i'm gonna go with my shadows again the this order it's not there's there's no real reason as to this order you can start with your shadows you can start with your midtones you can start however you want i personally prefer doing this because it avoids me from going too dark because that's that's my tendency always going too dark so i always make my light first um all right and now now that i have my gradients i'm gonna be quite comfortable sculpting the sculpting the shape out so there you go i'm gonna add that subtle bounce light here maybe a little bit more saturated that he has okay gonna blend it out like so um and i'm gonna start adding sort of sharp shapes to it but not a ton because then our gradient was really for nothing but i'm just starting to add a bit of the design from the bear this is too saturated it needs to be less saturated because it's further away and its angle is more towards the um, environment than it is towards the light source so anytime that happens when a shape is more towards but when the shape is uh pointing towards or away from the light source then it becomes more or less saturated depending on i guess your light source depending on on whether it's the sun whether it's like i don't know neon light all those things affect color temperature which is sort of like while i'm sculpting i'm keeping that in mind color temperature um there you go so sculpting little by little i'm gonna bring some of that brightness make it less desaturated because again it's pointing away and bring some of those um highlights uh, actually uh yeah I'll, I'll add some of the highlights just here not everywhere because uh highlights i consider that as a detail and i usually leave it at the end right uh Let's see 
I won't be able to watch it live, unfortunately. Sorry for the question spams. Uh, it's okay, Wufo. All good, man. You guys can uh, ask questions and then leave because it'll be in a video format. Anyways. Um, however, it does need to be asked here in the chat. Alright, so I'm gonna do that. Um, and now... Make it a little bit darker. Show the edge here. Wait. There you go. Again, I mean, obviously, they already spent a lot more time in this than I'll be able to. So I do need to rush a couple of areas, but the general idea is in there. All, all that will be left usually when answering these questions is refinement. So I really just focus on getting the questions answered. Let's add a little bit of blue reflecting from, I'm assuming, the environment or the bear's fur. Uh, Either way, that's probably what the artist decided to go for. And um, I think, yeah, I think we're ready for, I'm going to use the lasso tool here, actually, because it's going to be easier to give a gradient around here if this is mask masked out. Grab my soft brush and then just bam. I would highly recommend you guys getting used to the lasso tool. It is really, 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 really helpful. And knowing all of the shortcuts to change it from uh, like organic to line, for example, this. You pretty much just hold or release alt click. That's pretty much all I'm doing here. But I, I would highly, highly recommend it. It's super, super useful. All right. Sort of like mimicking that shape in there. Um, and then it's turning away in here. Okay, so now details, or the patterns rather. Pa I guess patterns, details, arguably. It's part of the design. Um... Oh, actually, no, yeah, that's fine. No, that's fine. Okay, let's do that. Make a new layer. Um, and now, the way he did patterns, I'm gonna just... I'm just gonna go with a dark shape first. But the way he did it, it seems like he just sort of spent, his, spent some nice time adding some shapes and whatnot first like flat with nothing in it and then we're gonna change the layer effect because i think he's a bevel and emboss sort of actually you know what this is good enough for now i'll do the layer changes so i'll double click double click on the layer i'll bring it here and now uh let's compare it here uh definitely he has inner shadow Oh, I should make it brighter. Okay, let's lower the opacity down to about what he has and set it to multiply. Multiply, lower down the opacity. His color is definitely warmer, so we'll do that in a second, but like do that. And now, um, oh, actually, you know what? Full opacity, but I'll just increase the, I'll increase the brightness of it since it's on the multiply layer the brighter it is well the more translucent it'll, it'll become so this will actually be better uh double click on the layer bring this up and now i am pretty sure he has bevel yeah he probably has bevel emboss uh set to outer bevel inner bevel yeah so set to inner bevel and then you change the shading angle which changes like the direction of the light it seems like he's done that first and then he went over manually um let's take the screen the highlights so you you can change the how the intensity of your highlights and the intensity of your shadow right uh you can also change the mode which i would highly recommend 
I would I would honestly make it normal and then give it a give it a like a warmer there you go I'm just trying to integrate the light with um, the highlights in terms of color uh, it can be pretty sharp sure depth depth is technically yeah well depth is depth all right size I'm gonna keep everything low so it becomes sharp the opacity can stay high now the shadows though cannot be that high uh, and I'd say that is it I'm just gonna do a couple more tweaks all right let's press ok oh wait it seems like he has one more thing I just noticed um inner glow inner glow I think let's see size yeah I'm pretty sure he has inner glow although my masking is a bit muddy or not complete I'm gonna keep the opacity relatively low and the size bigger and actually opacity way lower there you go just a, just a touch to define all the edges of the um, of the thing and I'm gonna increase the saturation of my base color to fit more uh, like the bronze inside right it's called glow yet it's in multiply blend mode yeah, I, I don't know man uh, let me set this to normal because I want to there you go I just want to color pick the exact color um, and then uh, I think I, I still think my version is a bit too harsh I'll probably lower down overall opacity but um, I think it'll become less contrasty once I add the reflections and the highlights which are like the the last things I usually want to I usually like doing all right, so let's keep that. And I'm not going to make it too detailed because, I mean, you get the point, right? You you need to spend time on this to make it cool looking and stuff. But there you go. All right. Let's say, let's say this is done. Okay. So I'm going to lower down the opacity. And now when I'll be adding the reflections and highlights, everything is going to become better. And then there's final details. And that'll be it for... Oh, shoot. I forgot about the... I forgot about the... Okay, so the side where the metal is here, it's exactly the same. I guess I'll do it. Fine. Um, your strokes are too harsh. <laughs> Let's see, um, I'll add the glow and then I'll add everything else later. Okay. Highlights. I'm going to set my highlights to linear dodge mode on my layer. Grab that soft brush and start doing that. Exactly that. I'm going to go here. Uh, wait, it's too white. It needs to be more yellow. You want to be careful with linear dodge because... Oh, there you go. That's it. We got it. So it's right here. I'm going to erase some of it and start creating reflections. So reflections usually have once one side of the reflection is soft, another one is uh, sharp. So the more you do that, the more it's going to look almost like glass, honestly. It's like quite polished... Uh, has a quite polished look to it and you can just keep doing that you can add a little bit of glow and then go in here and erase like that although I would suggest with a soft brush there you go and that's generally how you do these kind of uh, reflections here all right Let's add some I mean that's more yellow than not here and it seems like he has a bit of um has a bit of an outline on the 
edges of the metal which this can be considered as highlights so i left them for the end too i'm gonna add a little bit of that light around the edge of the designs like so just overall going in there of course you want to spend a lot more time than what i'm doing right now and uh let's add a bit of the blue reflection right it seems like he he likes doing that here like that and here too there you go on the sides and that's our highlights and we're gonna add a few more reflections to it and that should be it i mean i can i'll do the gold the gold like pattern to it too just to show you but then it's just for for will take like two seconds because it's quite simple but um yeah let's uh let's do that a bit of a should this be limited to painting questions or art in general art in general Questions in general, I guess. <laughs> uh, I have answered non-art questions on the Silver Decodes uh, once. I don't think we kept them, though. Uh, so there's a bit more reflection and texture to it. Uh, let's add a bit of uh, texture underneath these reflections. I'm going to make a new layer underneath the highlights that you're seeing. And I'm going to grab a very, very fine texture. Because I do feel my version is a little too soft in comparison to this artist's version. Uh, let's grab some like... Th oh, perfect. There you go. So like, it is like a rock texture or whatever. So I'm just going to go over and add like tap a little bit of the texture. There you go. Now it looks like it and it looks quite digital too <laughs> it's the only thing with it but there you go i'm just trying to be gentle with it if i see there's too much i'll control z um seems like there's a little bit of green here uh a little bit more here and there and that i mean this wouldn't be it i would refine it further but i don't want to spend more time on this I'm trying to keep these uh a answers as short as i can all right so now that there's done um making a new layer set it to hard light let's set that new layer to hard light and i'm gonna add some final um final reflections and it's, it's gonna be very subtle so we have a little bit of blue here seems like we have a little bit of blue and all of these tend to go a bit over the patterns but you do want to be sensible and like erase them away from like the patterns uh, depthness which I feel like I've haven't really done that much here on the highlights there you go it's a little bit it's a little bit better uh, so I'm gonna add very gentle uh, glows here and there and I'll erase them. And that honestly, oh, whoops, here. Other than the, the gold patterns on the sides, that should be it, which I'll be doing here in a second. Okay. All right. So yeah, obviously you spend more time on this than what, than what I did. Uh, now for the plating on the side uh, oh, Let's see uh, For the pattern on the side, it's pretty much what we've done here with the pattern with the pattern within um, Except 
let's take a bronze sort of mid-tone color all right uh wait i need a actual sharp brush there you go and then i'm just gonna i'm gonna draw a pattern first and then i'll adjust the settings accordingly all right this is good enough double click on the layer uh bring the this here and yeah it's pretty much the same like bevel and emboss but instead of inner it's outer right wait let me see oh this is oh hold on this is affecting everything you know what i've showed you how to do it with a bevel it's the same thing it's exactly the same thing as we did on the pattern on the center except um i'm gonna show you how to do it manually without any photoshop tricks so we do our shapes that should give at least a bit of variety to this answer instead of just repeating myself uh, you do the outline, right? Keep it nice and crispy. You can have whatever shapes you want. There you go. It's whatever. Um, trying to make it just a little bit cleaner. There you go. And then there's like these weird ass patterns to it. Okay, it doesn't really matter. Because uh, it's hidden away anyways. Alright, so. Okay, cool. So now that you have this pattern. Wait, I actually found the... There you go. Now that you have this pattern, what you want to do is lock the... Um, lock the layer. Uh, it's called let me hover over it lock transparency pixels you lock it and now when you paint on it you don't go over the edges so you do exactly the same as we've been doing so far which is gradients uh, well actually it's two steps for this one gradients highlights and ambient occlusion shadows and that's that's really that's going to be really it so first you paint the light oh maybe maybe reflections too but it's pretty simple there you go you can add a little bit of uh, cold or less saturated color here for the reflection and now it's mainly about you make a new layer clip to to this pattern layer and you just take your highest lights and you do the edge of it in one side where your light comes from also there's a bit of a texture to it so we'll be adding that in a moment uh, wait it needs to be a bit brighter than this yeah just go around the edge um now my version is scuffed because i'm trying to rush but you should be a bit more sensible doing this you know take your time it's 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 details anyways right you don't really want to spend way too much time on on it more than the foundation foundation is more important than details however you do want to still spend time on it seems like he has a bit of the edging here i'm not gonna do the whole thing because i want to move on to the next question however um this should be good for the highlights and now the shadows um the shadows is the opposite so we uh draw under the pattern so that you can just draw the shadow right I'm gonna pick this one up. I'm just gonna actually it's a bit too dark. There you go. Just gonna go around the edge and do that. And then it's sort of like the same effect you get, pretty much. I personally prefer to do it manually than using Photoshop like layer modes in, or blending modes or whatever it's called. I don't even know what it's called, the effects, right? Because I feel like I have a bit more control over everything, but um 
How did you do the texture on this? I used the texture brush for the rock. Uh, all right. I, I used like a, a, a rock texture is what I mean. There you go. And then of course you have the... You have the bolts. I'm rushing a little bit with this, but it's pretty much just that. It's just a, it's just a highlight with a little bit of a shadow next to it. Uh, there is a mid-tone though, like you want to be careful with it to not make it look too flat but this generally speaking is it's that and now for the texture i can do exactly the same make a new layer on top of everything set it to hard light i guess this time we'll do hard light and then i'll grab a rocky texture i don't even remember which one i had uh where is it was it this one? I don't think it was this one. No, it's not this one. Is it this one? Nope. Uh, this one is fine. Uh, wait, I think I found it. Yeah. So I'm just going to go over this area and sort of like add the final. This is what makes people go like, oh, so pretty type of thing, you know? But the, the, the foundation underneath it is the most important. So don't get... Don't get fooled. Do not get fooled by it. So a little bit of light, a little bit of shadow in it. And we are good to go. All right. So that was a speed run of the metal. I'm not gonna do the bottom part. I, it's just to showcase, you know, the answer. Um, but uh, I would have gone and refined everything or spent more time in each step. For the fur, however, how many brushes do you guys have? I only have four. I have a ton just because it's mostly just like actual textures instead of... I paint with two two three the rest is like occasional brushes um for the fur okay he does two things for the fur actually soft brush um and let's grab this sort of yeah let me see it seems like he starts soft as well so He'll have like, he'll paint the fur with a soft brush, right? Probably under, I think he paints under by the looks of it. So he doesn't go over the armor and then he paints over on a different layer. So let's do that. Uh, I'll paint this like area like so. There you go. Uh, Let's split our light and shadow as usual. Light, shadow. Not a ton, it seems. Uh, actually, maybe darker on the shadow here. Yeah, seems like darker in there. Uh, and now he goes over. So first you want to... The way you want to build up the... Um, the colors on on the fur that he has you want to go mid-tone first and highlights later so you want to throw in some colors throw in some like browns or just desaturated blues you will read as brown but i would recommend just like throwing in a couple of colors in there first i'm pretty sure this is not how he did it but i would recommend like it's easier for anyone to uh do it this way first so just throw in a couple of colors you can always go back in and you know do blue blue uh pre sat pretty saturated blues here and there and then if you have the saturated yellows or or browns you throw a couple and then you're gonna color pick from it and you're gonna do it with two brushes um 
It feels like it's just a normal round, but at the same time, not really. Okay. I'm gonna go with the soft brush, actually. Now, when you make your uh, brush, your soft brush really, really small, it can actually read as, as um, a sharp brush against all these big, soft colors. So that's pretty much what I'm doing. Uh, making it brighter. I'm not really adding... It's still blue. I'm just... It Actually, it's gray. But this gray against all of this blue, it makes it look like the light hitting on it is warm due to color color contrast. So you want to start adding in, you know, the fur. And you want to keep your brush relatively small. Uh, I talk about more on the, as far as hair and fur goes, about like the patterns and how you should go about it on other videos. So I would recommend checking like my hair or fur videos. I think I have one of each if you want to know um if you want to know about you know how how am i thinking about these locks of hair and that sort of stuff and i'm just going going to like color peek a couple of areas here now from uh, the underneath colors right that's why they're there so that i can then color peek and get in there um there there you go mix it up right that's why again that's why we laid in the colors in the first place if you're laying if you're laying in colors underneath and you're just painting over everything you just wasted time to be honest so um because I, I see quite a quite a few people doing that they do like this crazy complex under color stuff and then they use none of it You wanna you wanna avoid that. Alright. So uh I'm gonna go over here and do exactly the same. Hey Rob, how long are you doing this for? I have some friends who probably love to come by. Um hey, what's up, uh Tom? I'm pretty good. Uh your friends can come by for sure. I'm still gonna go on for a little bit. I haven't answered all the Silver Decodes uh, questions. Alright. So, uh... There you go. Who's this Rob speaking of? It's me, Rob! Smile. Chat, you didn't know all this time I'm Rob? You're not a true viewer. Actually, if you spell John backwards, it reads as Rob. <laughs> Anyways, uh, as far as fur goes, uh, this is how... This is pretty much how, it, uh, how I would continue. However... Let me just add a little bit more brown here, it seems. However, he uses another brush, which is like a rake type of brush. Let me see if I have one. I'm pretty sure I have one. Uh, not here. Oh, there you go. I have, here. Here's one. He uses this sort of like brush to it. So there's a couple of areas that that seems to be the case. Um... So I'm just going to go over a few areas, do exactly, exactly that. And uh, at this point you pick and choose how much you want that effect to to be pronounced. So you can, you, you can just do a couple of areas and leave it as a detail, which seems like that was the case for the artist. However, I've seen cases where everything was pretty much done with that brush, right? Um, I'm just gonna go and bring some of this hair over here like that and of course you'd want to continue refine it etc etc but I do want to move on to the next question there you go and that is it 
that is pretty damn much it chat actually i could like cover the whole thing and then darken i feel like it's missing a bit of uh contrast here to be honest yeah it, it needed a little bit of contrast there there you go question answered easy clap